Alright. Time for a Diana game. I will be playing into a Nidalee here, which is a little sketch early game, perhaps. Oh, there it is. Invade. Okay. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna reset right away. Across the wall, like, about, like around the corner here. They didn't kill my ward, which is really good. So I'm still gonna go for this. Beautiful, fine. Uh, Elo of this game, we are talking like high plat, low diamond type of MMR. Thereabouts, so you are aware. They are gonna go for a cheese play on this, or what is the plan here? I would never make it there, by the way. I mean, they could just take that with the two of them with Shaco boxes, I suppose. I'm just gonna start red buff. It's fine. I don't even. Yeah, uh, it's fine. Uh, this might actually kind of destroy my pathing, perhaps. We'll see. Riven checked that, though. They have vision over here. Nidalee walked up there. That's fine. I'm not going to get a leash now, which is slightly unfortunate, but it is something to live with, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, uh, for the build for Diana, there will be a complete explanation with variables and an item set on the Patreon link in the description. I'll explain everything there in detail. When it comes to the build, I'll go through it in the game itself a little bit as well. But uh, just so you know, it's there. There is also other educational content over there as well. And uh, yeah. Okay, so we know Nidalee started here, right? She is, though, doing blue into wolves. Very strange pathing choices. Okay. Taking a little bit more damage than I would have necessarily liked here as well. Okay, she is not doing her Gromp whatsoever. That is interesting. Riven is taking super aggression into the Shaco here. Level advantage, yep. Okay. Um, it looks to me right now like I could technically go top. Okay, that's, he outplayed him, never mind. Uh, I could technically go top, but if I do that, I'd run into some issues most likely by losing my entire bot side. And Nidalee also started top, so I had no camp to trade, so that was never going to be a play regardless. My war disappeared, which means their war disappeared. It's just going to be a matter of what is Nidalee planning. Nidalee went mid. I can definitely do something about this, actually, because now I can just adapt my pathing to this because she hasn't done red yet, so she dies here. Which is fine. Even if she wouldn't have died there, she would have still had like low HP going back to her red, and I could just take her red now. Which is what I'm gonna do. This is just something that was allowed because of this the place, uh, the choice she made, basically. So I'm gonna make use of that real quick. Take a red buff. Find this out. Hit and bolt aren't looking particularly great here. I think this would be too risky to go for right now. I'm just gonna run at bolt lane, go in from behind for this gank. Flash that. Oh, she hit this minion instead. Damn, I was about to flash your spear, but then she just hit a minion. Uh, that kind of sucks, this. Do I want to... She's definitely planning something, right? Or is she just taking Scuttle, really? She just took Scuttle. Okay, I'm going to do Grom because it's safer positioning compared to doing my blue right there, and I can stall a little bit of time this way. That's great and all, but there's nothing I can do about this, buddy. Italy with a turret tank, though. How low did she get right there? I wonder. I am worried. I'm not care. Like, I'm gonna have to be super careful in this moment in time. I haven't got my recall off yet, and she has. I can't some top side of respawn, so I need to clear this real quick and just instantly reset right now. These two camps, I do not want to give them up if possible. Okay. I'll take the AP first, get this, this. Beautiful. Okay. Once, yes. She could have done my Raptors, potentially. Just my Raptors, I think. I don't think she could have done anything else. If she goes for this now, she dies, so that would be unlikely. Pretty sure it's shake or loss without the Nidalee mattering there in that situation as well. Clean that up. Got the second respawn on this, and I should be in a pretty good state at the moment. Oh, 
The ra why? What? The raptors have just respawned as well, like a little bit ago. Depending on her pathing choices, I might be able to make it to her raptors right now. I want to go for it. I think playing a bit more aggressive here makes sense. I just walked into that trap, so now it gave away my position. My auto pathing destroyed me there. I misclicked somewhere. I don't know. Take my time to do this right now instead of walking instantly down, so this way they don't suspect too much. I can like now look mid. I didn't want to instantly walk. I was about to instantly walk, but... Dusk approaches. That's not going to work. Mm. You gonna ult? Right, did you just press ult? What? Are you gonna ult? What are you doing, fam? Thank god you did something. Holy, I was waiting on that one the entire time there. I think I got him. Okay, fine. I got to drag him then. Well played on bot there. Definitely not bad. That early, like, gank helps them, I think, quite a bit already. I was just waiting for Yone to go, man. He had ult the entire time. I just, I don't know. Make sure to keep your passive active as long as possible here as well. I just killed, like, Nidalee and uh, Botlin just died, so this should be a free dragon. A little bit risky with my bottom that HP with Katarina potential resets, but it should be fine. I don't think there's any reaction chances for this instantly reset here that way i can get run out of my base do the red buff uh, maybe crux on respawn as well which i should be respawning soonish and then i can look for that rift herald uh whoa this one yes mm, i'll take the attack speed dagger for the extra gold actually the so run out i have 38 seconds on this rift herald with the dragon this is good i can clear these two camps and then walk down that way to the herald potentially it should be good it's technically as well do this first actually and then use the plant over the wall or just a dash to the rift herald over the wall with diana that'd be better here uh, ooh, i'm not gonna sit i'm not gonna hit six off this am i oh that sucks so badly good juke I'm gonna wait for yone to walk up a bit Kill. Q in there and then it, activate your W and then with a W you can dash through E execute. If you have a longer chase situation going on then you can also just uh, hold on to your E. Like the E again to wait for your next Q cooldown which would be fine. But that situation was just quite good. I need help here please. I don't like the fact that both my top and mid are just kind of trolling me a little bit too hard here. Looks like the Nidalee is not contesting, which is kind of decent. Ah, I hate this so much. Like, they're literally just AFK. I should have dodged that one. Like... That's just so frustrating. Like, why? Just... just why? Both of them, like neither of them wanted to help me on the pings. That's so annoying. I mean, I got the Rift Herald, which is fine. I guess I could have tried flashing out to just save myself. That's so, so, so dumb, man. I guess it's completely out of my control as well. Them just completely griefing me. Like, there's nothing I can do about it. So sad. I mean, it's not going to cost me too much, I don't think. But it would have been really nice if my team would have held. Because I nearly would have just died. It would have given me enough money for like the Nashes on my back as well would have made me to, like way stronger and potentially would have allowed me to be there for the bot lane play there as well so that all just kind of snowballed into oblivion by that yone just afking mid same kind of goes for shaco to be fair but i'm gonna take my reset here just get this nash just straight away and then we'll go to my towards my bot side i have a baron recall so i'll be pretty fast anyway man i'm really unhappy about what just happened that really sucks Oh, it's such a colossal lead, and then they just don't show for Herald when they just walk mid AFK. Alright. It is what it is. Let's move on. Dragon's gonna spawn in like two minutes ish. Old Scuttle will be spawning. I have my Nashers now, so I'm gonna be extremely strong at this point. Make sure we uh, get that clear tempo, keep it up. And I wanna start pressuring Nidalee for her camps now, because I will be much stronger than her in any situation, I think. Due to my finished Nashers. Like, the moment you finish Nashers on Diana, you are gonna be very strong. 
That's a huge item to get on this jump. Yeah, there it is. That's just nothing they can do. Yeah, Arena can't do anything about this either because full HP. I only did recall, which could have potentially been bad. I don't want them to go aggressive on this. I kind of want to just wait for Katarina to walk away. Because I can wait on this control right here and wait for them to walk up. That missed? I just flash on him, make, it, make sure I finish him off. Katarina ran back to mid, so... I'm very surprised that first Q missed. That kind of sucked. But I'm just going to use the Herald on bot turret here, I think. Because Katarina's mid Riven. Top Riven doesn't have teleports. I don't have to worry about that either. Yeah, just make sure to use your passive effectively here. I was hoping that would she would walk into that. I got like 350 gold out of this, which is not bad. I need to just push this out. No, I lost vision. Ah, oh, you rat. No way you're going that way, buddy. I don't know if I can do anything about this. Ah, her spell shield. Oh, no. I was trying to knock her in a favorable direction, uh, which would have worked, but her spell shield prevented that from happening, so that actually turned out quite awkward. I'm going to take my recall here, because I have quite substantial gold. It's very substantial recall, even. Look at this. Good. And I'm just going to run straight out of base back to bot lane, because uh, the bot lane is going to walk up. I also want to play for this dragon right now, and I have two minutes for the next Rift Herald, so I want to look for those. I can do my wolves walking out of base to hit level 9 here, and then I could look for this bot lane play. The plan's not going to be there, but I should be able to walk it in, hopefully. Good, level 9. Bolt. Very good, even. Make sure the red buff slow on him. Very nice. We just push out bolt wave now. And then we go for dragon right after, basically. I'm gonna go for turret here. Well. Because I, I don't... Okay, no. I wasn't sh exactly sure of the map situation right there. I want to just have some assistance on the dragon here, if possible. I'm gonna do this. Then we hit this dragon. Dash over the wall from that specific spot so you can get over it. Morgana is preventing this from happening, so I don't have to use my uh, my control ward right here. It's quite nice. If I wasn't sure, I just control ward like the dragon for like extra vision potential, or even over the wall for extra vision potential. Uh, with that guy just dying, I can just walk straight through mid here and go for his top side camps, which is what I'm going to do. Also, this can potentially allow me to help Shaco sweep, walk up. Finish him off. Don't quite know why my Kate and my Morgana AFK there instead of walking up with us, but it is what it is, I guess. I can't do this because the, the, the threat here of too many people is way too high. My Kate Morgana would have walked up with me that way. That could have been better, but I can't fight the Riven there with the amount of people that are going to be collapsing on me without my ultimate up. It just wouldn't work. I just have to take that as a loss and uh, yeah, leave. Technically, if that wasn't like such a colossal numbers disadvantage, one of you wanting Riven would have been no problem at all. But it's just a matter of that numbers disadvantage that was going to be really bad for me if I didn't respect it. He's probably going to try to reset here, I would imagine. He just hit level 11. Um, I don't know if I can fight this. Her ult's pretty low cooldown, but I don't know where their enemy team is right now. I'm a little bit worried. Okay, they're not doing this so far. Nidalee is both sides. I'm just going to start it then. If I instantly know where she is, this is good. Because I'm going to start it up. And there will be nothing to worry about. Just didn't have vision there for a bit. And I just wanted to kind of wait for my Morgana and stuff to get here. So I can do this quite safely. At the next objective. Good. Go mid. 
do want to get the mid turret off the map. Katarina got that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go for this guy because the other guy was not reachable for me anymore with the way I played that, uh, leading with my E to get the engage, basically. Uh, so I just go for the peel back towards the guy that is pretty much guaranteed to die off a of Morgana CC, if you know what I mean. It's going to be good. We're just going to shove this out right away. I not actually need to rift herald bounce on this one. Oops, didn't need it. The more pressure we can put here, the better, because Katarina stayed bot lane, so this is going to be quite good for us. Bounce, and then I want to get one bounce here. All I want is the bounce right now, so I'm going to try to force the herald to bounce. At least put a bit, pre bit of pressure down so we get that bounce. And then we want to transition to the wards, the bot side, to our like bot scuttle and my bot side camps. This camp should be here, which it is. Quickly clean it up, walk down here towards the bot scuttle and then my bot side respawn. We have two minutes on dragon, so we're going to have to keep that into account uh, with the reset timing. We clean this up and we clean as many camps as possible before uh, we the dragon spawns and we can get there in time. As you can see, I will have quite a large recall here in a bit with my death cap if I can farm enough for it. Mid lane is definitely a situation right now, but... gonna get this done i think it's worth more to me right now compared to the lucian because they're i don't think they're worth very much I'll just swipe all my camps right now maybe go towards like full plan for the riven play look for the dragon reset right afterwards i have an extra smite so i can use one you're gonna get him just get him just reset after that then it's gonna play for the dragon in one minute i get my death cap here Good, and we'll build a, an extra amp dome with that for the money we have. I guess we have Futures Market, right? Uh, uh, run straight bot, make sure the wave pushes in if they don't do it, I guess. They might, I don't even know, they might, but... Get the shoved out, and then we'll go for the dragon play in 50 seconds. And the rest of them, I don't really mind too much. I need this wave to be there in fast as possible. Okay. Sweep all of these bushes right here. Walk at them. You pull them in with ult and then, um, or sorry, E, pull them in with ult, W, like W, E, pull them in with ult, Q on top of yourself, so you hit Q on both. As you pull them into the singular spot in the middle, which your Q is an AoE radius, as you can see, so you can hit both. And then you finish that off. And we see the Katarina on bot lane here. Finish him off with a burst there. We auto attack at the passive proc and then W E through a target instantly procs all your W orbs. So that's a lot of burst damage. Wasn't gonna like need an extra Q for chase potential there, so we don't have to hold on to our E reset. Push that off. One minute ten on the Baron here. Finish him off. Finish him off as well. I don't think I'll be able to get this guy because I don't have my cooldown, so I'm not going to chase him. Make sure to take as many of these camps as possible. Okay, if we're going to have to blue buff, I don't really mind. Oh boy. There again, passive combo with the E combo there to get him. I don't know what the point in all of taking all of my camps is for my teammates here, but sure, I guess. Oh, he might need it. I'll give it to him. Clean up these camps here. Now, the question is, do I need a Zonias? I don't think I do, so I can easily afford to... Uh, Go back and get my Lich Bane right now. If I don't need a Zonias on Diana here, we're building a burst build this, this game, of course. I just realized what I... Ah, okay, whatever, I guess. It's fine. Should have built um, should have built something else there. It can be my last item. It's not that big of a deal. Because the, the Magi's death cap combination is obviously very strong. I have 666 AP. But I uh, may or may not have built a Mythic item, Kek W. 
Uh, it, it doesn't isn't necessarily required, but like it's kind of funny actually. A little bit of a build whoopsie. Finish him off. Finish him off. Lich Bane procs are super strong right now with this much AP. I actually kind of prefer it over a mythic, so I'm not even sad that I didn't build it. I'll be real with you. But I can get it last item here, it's fine. Gonna clean up these camps. Lich Bane procs are so strong. Especially with buff Lich Bane, so... Not too worried about this. Let's get the Bolt Wave pushed in. Here we go for this, like, turret here as well. We finish the build with a mythic here, that'd be fine. You don't have to get your mythic early or anything. I basically built a death cap because I was getting a lot of Magi stacks. Uh, so getting the Magi there and just building into a death cap with a lot of Magi stacks is super strong for damage potential. So that's why I did it, and that's also why I kind of didn't think about the mythic too much. Finish this off. Only have to be a little careful here, no, don't I? And three shot is third, basically. There it goes. That is the, the advantage of having both Lich Bane and Nashers. If you want to hit the, the inhibitor with your passive, you have to stand against it. And I just two shot it right there, as you saw. Are you serious? Oh. Finish this. And again, here at the inhibitor, we have to stand in it to hit the 1400 passive hit. Finish that off. Caitlyn is definitely too aggressive there. I wonder if I'm going to be fast enough on this one. I don't think will. I will because she is faster in bushes herself. Uh, she does not have her smite finish though, I guess. Come on. Come on. Get with him. Nope. Goodbye. But I thought, uh, and then, I mean, at this point I could just simply clear this up and finish my build with a mythic. It's a little... I mean, interesting, I guess, build pathing wise. If I didn't get so many Magi stacks, I would have just built it after the Magi's. But with so many Magi stacks, it's actually completely fine. It's just for death cap, it just amplifies your kit so much. Now, right here, I'll just get Night Harvester. You can also get Rocket Belt, but late game. Like, the way I see it right now, Ability Haste is a better friend for me right now than actually going for, um, for the Rocket Belt Magic Penetration at this stage in the game. Because it's getting a little bit later, they are more prone to build some potential magic resistant stuff. So right now it doesn't make sense to get like the rocket belt too much. I won't do it. See if I can catch him. I might be able to. He is dead. A lot of ability haste here. Pretty sure like the moment I get in range, he's just they both die here actually. I just use Diana's disgusting turret capabilities to one-shot these things. Are we serious right now? Alright. Ah, I am not going to win that one with the CC coming in from Nami. All right, a little too optimistic on my end. Fair enough. Uh, this has already done 729 damage, though, so that's pretty respectable. I'm not going to lie. L look at this. About, about 2,000 damage from that. I mean, this worked out quite well, I would say. They got Dragon here. It should be fine. It was a little aggressive for me. I was kind of like seeing how much I could pull off there, but it's a little much. I mean, we can do it, like, one of two ways right now. We could just go Baron in, like, two minutes. Um, and then push out top and clean up the rest of the base. But we can all probably just go walk down mid and end. With the blue pot here, I'm basically max build. I can easily sell these boots for um, either Cosmic Drive here. Or I can go for Void Staff if I need it. But Void Staff is not going to be needed here. So it's probably going to be a Cosmic Drive angle for the extra movement speed. Because then this will give movement speed, this will give movement speed as well with 10 stacks. Blue Smite, we have that. And then we have the Cosmic Drive on top of it. This might be a game ender for this guy, actually. Yeah, he did. Okay, cool. I mean, that is it for Diana. Um, yeah, I'm in the low game-ish. So, hope you guys have enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the endgame stats. Alright, so for the endgame stats here, I ended up doing...
34k damage, let's say. Very, very strong. Highest damage here with, uh, without a doubt. Heavily got the Nidalee down as well. It's just some outplay pathing, essentially, which is good. Uh, we have true damage here, 700, which is smite damage. Objective damage at 77.8k. Trying to stay on top of this as much as possible, getting those dragons, but also turret damage here at another 13k from Diana, because she just delete those things. Uh, so this is really, really good here. Healing or healing done, sorry, here at 9.6. Damage taken at 19.4. Self-mitigated at 23.8. This is obviously going to happen due to your shield if you use it effectively. Uh, gold earned at 17.3. It's like not even close with the rest of the game. That's very strong there. And then for the runes, uh, we have 600 healing from Conqueror, but the adaptive damage is the bigger one you don't see here. Prime for a bit of health, bit of gold. We have the attack speed here because their team didn't really require any tenacity, so I can just go attack speed instead. I could have gone for bonus damage because if you're going to go burst build, you might as well go for ex extra execute damage and just faster damage output that way. And then we have magical footwear and futures market for just overall gold tempo. Build order here, I went obviously Nash's first uh, into a into a Magis because I had the stacks and all that for it. And because I actually was getting a lot of stacks, I went into a death cap because it amplifies Magi's by a lot. Plus, it gives like this gives 100 AP, so it amplifies a lot of your kit, which actually ended up me not building Night Harvester, which is completely fine, or like building a Mythic in general. Uh, what I most likely should have done because I didn't realize it instantly was I could technically switch out the Lich Pain for this to get more use out of a Mythic pass out of three legendary items. But I wouldn't have replaced the, the mythic with a death cap. That is not good. That wouldn't that wouldn't have happened this game anyway, uh, regardless of anything, because the death cap was amplifying Magi's too well as long as that Nastra, so it's gonna give a bigger power spike compared to your mythic ever would, basically. So but I think it would have been a little bit more optimal uh, if I switched my Lich Bane for the uh, Mythic instead and then build the Lich Bane after the Mythic. Because yeah, the legendary passive can kick in. I probably could have even built like the uh, rocket belt instead uh, in this situation because that would have been earlier to the point where the magic penetration probably holds a bit more value still but i mean regardless of this game i was super far ahead so it probably wouldn't have mattered too much uh, but yeah i mean yeah that's really that so with that being said i uh hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you did make sure to like button below it helps me quite a bit if you'd like to see more videos from in the future hit the subscribe button as well and i'll see you guys in the next video